So church, our text has been coming from Matthew 7, 21 and 22. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father in heaven, which is in heaven. Many will say unto me, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name have done many wonderful works? Question mark, question mark, question mark on a topic they should know. Today we're going to talk about salvation. We're going to talk about a second man that's being revealed from heaven. Um, we talked in our last study about Mark 9.41, talks about, for whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name because you belong to Christ, verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. Remember, the condemnation is those that don't know who the son is john 3 18 tells you because they believe not in the name and romans 8 1 tells you there's no condemnation to them that are in christ who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit you need to know and have that complete name and know who that is and let's go back isaiah 9 6 is worded an interesting way it's worded because it explains a born-again experience or what is what what the experience takes in order to be born again. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. It's interesting it's worded that way. Because as we're going to see, you have to be born of the flesh and of the spirit to enter in the kingdom of God. That's why Isaiah wrote it this way, a son is given. There's no other name given under heaven whereby we must be saved, and that's Jesus Christ. And Acts 4, 10, 11 tells you that. Unto you is given to know the mystery of the kingdom, Mark 4, 11. Because if you don't know this mystery, if you don't know, have this revelation, how then will you know all mysteries? And the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And as we're going to see today, we're going to see the name the Father has given him. Who he is revealed. Ephesians 2, I forgot where I put my notebook. Oh, there it is. Ephesians 2, 11 talks about that piece and who it involves. And I'm going to start at verse 11. Wherefore, remember that you being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who were called uncircumcision by that which is called a circumcision in the flesh made by hands that at the time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of the promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Today, many people, many uh, so-called born-again people, don't have that hope. They don't know who Christ is in them, which is the, your only hope of glory, Colossians 1.27. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were sometimes were far off and made nigh by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. So he is our peace. You must be born of the water and of the spirit. Christ is our peace, who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. We talked the other day about the veil being done away in Christ. Second Corinthians 3.17 talks about that, which veil is done away in Christ. 3.17.18. Having abolished, for he is our peace, having abolished in his flesh the enmity and love of commandments, ordained for to make in himself of two, one new man, so making peace. This is what the Lord is doing in your life. The revelation of Christ shows you who you are in Christ. It shows, it allows Christ in you to shine forth, to manifest in your life. He must increase, I must decrease. For me to live as Christ and to die as gain. Um, Philippians 1.21 talks about that. In Galatians 2.20, nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And came and preached peace to you were far off and to them that were near. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Jesus Christ is the revelation you need to understand who the Father is, because no man knows. Matthew eleven twenty seven 27 clearly tells you, no man knows who the Father is but the Son, who the Son is but the Father. And to he whomsoever the Son will reveal. It's who the Son reveals. 
through from the Father through the Son. And let's go back to 1 Corinthians 15 here. Paul makes an interesting statement. In 1 Corinthians 15, 45. And so it is written. Well, and before that, he's describing the resurrection of the dead. In verse 42, it is sown in corruption. It is raised in corruption. It is sown in dishonor, is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, is raised in power. So we see the difference between the flesh and the spirit. It is sown a natural body, is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body. There is a spiritual body. And so it is written. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last man, Adam, was a life-giving or quickening spirit. The first Adam fell. Your Bible tells you that we all sin and fall short of the glory. Yeah, because we're still influenced by the first Adam, the lower nature, the fallen man. It's the second man that the Lord sent as, as a backup, as to give you power. The Bible says Christ, uh, 1 Corinthians 1, 24, Christ, the power and wisdom of God. It's the gospel of Christ, Romans 1, 16, where the power is was made a life-giving spirit. For howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterwards that which is spiritual. So the first Adam fell, and because of that, we were all born with a lower nature, a fallen nature. It takes the second man. The first man is of the earth earthly, the second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthly, such are they also that are earthly, or earthly, and as is the heavenly, such as they also that are heavenly. As we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. I think of John chapter 1, I believe it's about verse 6, that the Bible says he's the light that lights every man that comes into the world. So that enlightens you to the realm, the first realm. The, the, the light enlightens you to the realm of the, uh, the flesh. That which is born of flesh is flesh. You have a conscious awareness of what's right and wrong. It's the second birth. That born again, which enlightens you, the second man from heaven can enlighten you to the things, the realm of the spirit, the things above. You need that revelation to understand because no man knows. No man can know these things unless it's revealed by the spirit. And as we see, it's the second man. That's Christ. Unto us a child is born, Jesus of Nazareth. That was the first Adam. He had a lower nature. He was he was born of the flesh. It took the second man, and of those two, one new man was made. So Jesus Christ could be an example of, of how to live a life pleasing to God without sin. Without sin. And it took Christ in him, because the Bible says, if any man has not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. Romans 8, 9 tells you that. And if you go down farther in eight sixteen, it says, the spirit bears witness with our spirit. And tells us who we are in Christ. It allows the second man from heaven to reveal himself to you, to show you who you are in Christ. The Lord made the same statement in John 3. In John 3, 3, Jesus answered, said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus, you know, according to his limited carnal understanding said how can a man be born when he's old are we going to enter into the mother's womb and be reborn well that was the outward man and the lord was speaking in a parable here jesus answered, said barely i say unto you except a man be born of born of the water and of the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of god and that's what the name of jesus christ does it acknowledges unto us a child is born jesus of nazareth and it it also reveals who the son was given christ and of these two one new man is made and we see that demonstrated in the life of jesus and nazareth he goes on to talk about that which is born of flesh is flesh and that which is born of spirit is spirit marvel not that i say unto you you must be born again you must be born again and when you're reborn into the realm of the spirit now it's time for you to let God be true and man the liar instead of the other way around. 
don't settle for what man has to tell you as far as many of man's doctrines just claim Jesus, the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Some claim Jesus was God. And yet your Bible is very clear. Who is a liar? But he that denies that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist that denies the Father and Son. 1 John 2.22 tells you that. So it doesn't tell you he was a God. It's that he's made that same Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. So, folks, let the Spirit reveal himself to you, not man. Man will tell you what the Word says, and man can tell you a lot of things about what the Bible says. The Spirit will tell you what it means, and only the truth will set you free. I'm looking at Romans 1. Paul talks about in 1 1, he was a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be God, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised before by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. There again, we see that unto us a child is born, according to the seed of David, according to the flesh. And all through the Old Testament, we see how the devil has tried to take down the Israelites and pervert that uh, that seed. And even in the time of our Lord, after his birth, Herod tried to kill all the firstborn, tried to kill off that, that seed of David. And declared, no, it doesn't just end with the flesh. See, many do man's doctrines today can only operate in the outward. They only see what the outward man. They see Jesus and Nazareth, which like we said in one of the past studies, Mark 6, 3, there's not, there's not a mystery there. Jesus of Nazareth, he has sisters and brothers, Mary, Joseph, he's a carpenter. There's no mystery. The mystery is in Christ, the second man from heaven, and declared to be a son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. When you, when you become born again, you die to the old nature, to the old man, and then your resurrection in a newness of life, so that you can allow a new man. Christ in you to come alive, by whom we've received grace, we've received grace and apostleship for the obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. In our last study, we talked about in John 1 12, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, to become the sons of God, to those that believe in his name. You have to know his name. You can't access the Father unless you know the Son, and vice versa. Among whom also you are the called of Jesus Christ. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. If any man has not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. If you don't have a working knowledge of who you are in Christ, you are none of his. That's why when we go and we've we've talked about this, the revelation of Christ. Matthew 16 is very clear to tell you that. It describes, and the Lord was asking a spiritual question in Matthew 16, 13. Who do men say that I, the son of man, am? Well, they all knew he was Jesus of Nazareth. Anybody, you know, they could point that out, no problem. Paul knew that as well. And we'll get, we'll cover that here in a moment. And they said, some say John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, one of the prophets. He said, but who say ye that I am? Simon Peter answered, said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And the Lord's response was because Peter gave a spiritual response. The Lord has answered, blessed are Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And then it goes on to talk about building the church upon the rock. What rock? The rock of Christ. That rock solid name. Christ. This answered both questions. Not only was he Jesus of Nazareth, but he was Christ, the Son of the living God. The second, Peter was able to give a clear description of the second man from heaven. And let's go to Acts 9. And you go through the scriptures here. What were the, his holy apostles and prophets preaching? Christ. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Um, I said Acts 9, didn't I? I'm going farther than I wanted to. Acts 9, it's interesting because Paul, in Acts 9, 15, the Lord said unto Paul, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel. While well, he was speaking to Ananias to go speak to Paul. Let Paul know that he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles, kings, 
and the children of Israel. For I will show him what great things he will suffer for my name's sake. So what did Brother Saul do in verse 20? Once the scales were removed, once you're able to see beyond the veil of the flesh, straightway in verse 20, he preached Christ in the synagogue that he is the son of God. All of a sudden, Paul had a new, a new revelation. He was able to see who the second man from heaven is. And he was able to, to preach a complete doctrine. So ladies and gentlemen, and we talked about this in Colossians the other day as well, that you are complete in Christ. That gives the complete answer. And that describes the two, uh, the two births. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. And we're complete in Christ. Colossians 2.10 tells you that. Because, or 2.8 tells you, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him. Folks, would you not like a complete reward? Mark 9 says that if we're in Christ, we're not going to lose our reward. Matthew 7 says people are losing their reward. Why? Because they didn't know his name. They didn't have the complete answer. They were only to, they only knew the first man and not the second man, the Lord from heaven. So folks, be complete and understand that there is a second man from heaven waiting to reveal himself to you and give you the power needed to overcome your lower nature. 